to the Alpha Pickleball Podcast, where we slice through the noise to bring you the juiciest insights, strategies, and stories from the dynamic world of pickleball. Join us as we serve up engaging conversations with top players, coaches, and enthusiasts, giving you an ace perspective on all things pickleball. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just stepping onto the court, get ready for a volley of knowledge that'll elevate your game to alpha levels. Let the rallies begin. All right. Welcome again to the show. I'm your host, Tats. Uh, today's guest is Andre Diescu, uh, pro pickleball player, um, I guess globetrotter now. Um, thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> Uh, thanks for having me, Tots. Pleasure being with you guys. Yeah. Um. How How many years have you been at pickleball? Uh, you know, I started playing uh at the end of 2016. Um, I randomly discovered at the, the club I was teaching tennis at. We had some members who played on the cruise ship, and uh, they started putting some uh, weird tapes on the tennis uh, hardcourt, you know, like everybody else, and uh. And then we, we ended up having a little learn and play exhibition with some of the pros at the time. And uh, they went to do some doubles exhibition and uh, so I'll jump in with them and, uh, and see what the game is about. And I was like, wait, this is a lot of fun. I, I should play a little bit more and uh, play it again. I think the day after that and within like three, four weeks, I already signed up for a tournament. So uh, it happened pretty quick. That's awesome. And at the time, were you still competing on the tennis tour? No, I was done for a while. I had a shoulder surgery that kind of stopped the competing on the tennis tour. I must have been at least two years out of commission, if not a little longer than that. Got it. Got it. And um, yeah, so I mean, when you started to, Nick, at what point um, did you think that could, you know, turn into something more than just a just a hobby? Uh, I think it was like 2019, late 2019, maybe early 2020 you know you, you had the tools being established i think both pp and app were established in 2019 and you could tell it's getting a lot more organized a lot more serious then you had the major league pickable happening in 2020 so uh, that's when you start to realize that you know what you could actually leave like a professional athlete out of this thing and uh yeah you can get pretty serious about it it was it was all right before that as well it was just very, not very organized so it was a lot of like small private entities just running turns and um yeah so i i think 2019 was probably the year when i when you got the feeling that okay this this could get pretty serious yeah i mean I, uh, when you started off were you just you were you drilling taking it that serious or i mean it was it sort of 2019 when you started to take everything up a notch um how did it progress for you um, well, I, I took it pretty serious at the start just because I had to catch up with everybody else and I had to get the nuances of the game and and learn all these things because I didn't want to go to the tournament and uh, and get beat, you know. So, um, yeah, t t took it pretty serious then. And then, look, I, I played a U.S. Open back then. I played the, the Nationals. Those were kind of the tournaments where we got to see the level a little bit and I realized I got a lot of work to do. So uh, it, I've been pretty pretty serious on from the you know from the get-go the only time where i took quite a bit off actually um didn't play tournaments didn't really practice much either was uh was during COVID. uh you know there were a lot of restrictions there were not a lot of tournaments going on um obviously i had a little kid at home and having all that so try to keep everybody safe so it was at the start when nobody knew what was going on either so um yeah so i had a probably like a couple of months off there but uh other than that it's been full on from uh from day one yeah, for sure. I think, you know, when, when I see your game, one of your the things you love, it looks like you love to hit is that like sort of forehand kind of lofted straight ahead shot. I mean, did you always have that or did you develop that over the years? Uh, it, like every shot, it, it takes a takes a lot of reps to develop it. I, I No, that's not necessarily a shot if I didn't tennis. So I didn't have that from the get-go. Uh, this is something I definitely picked up in Pickable with a lot of practice and uh, a lot of time on the court uh but it's definitely one of my favorite shots for sure yeah and f for you i mean what are you thinking about when you're hitting that because it looks it looks innocent but it it's hard it looks like the opponents have a hard time doing anything with it 
yeah, just try to keep the ball low. That's that's the key in this game, right? Just try to try to keep the ball low, try to neutralize your aggression on the other side of the net. Um, and I'm really like pretty much every shot that I hit, I'm really focusing on the spot I'm gonna hit it to, you know. So just focusing on my aim. That's that's pretty much it. Yeah, and how much of that sort of is, you know, I guess uh, depended, you know, before the the match starts, and how much of it is a feeling out of during the match. I think it's pretty well established before the match. It's a shot that I go to quite a bit. Uh, obviously, I execute it on, but uh, but I hit it a fair amount throughout all my matches. So, um, uh, to answer your question, I think it's a little situational, but it's nothing. Yeah, um, nothing that I didn't have planned before going in for sure. Yeah, for sure. And you know, uh, you're you're a fairly tall pickleball player. Um, you know. For other people that are playing pickleball that are taller, what suggestions do you have for them? I look at the ball doesn't bounce too high, so uh, you know being tall definitely helps at the start of the point when you're reaching inside the kitchen. You try and take balls out of the air, you know it helps you attack a lot easier. But you know once once you get to the kitchen line, you got to be able to stay pretty low and you got to be able to stay pretty balanced. So I, I would suggest a lot of stretching. Um, I would suggest a lot of uh, you know balance training, uh, a lot of lower back training for sure you know a lot of twisting and tearing the kitchen line over there that's uh you know that it, it requires you to be loose and requires you to to make the right type of movement so uh uh definitely work on your to stay low definitely work strengthen the legs and and the glutes as well because you got to do a lot of bending and a lot of reason yeah for sure now uh, what you know in terms of composition so these are strength things like off court versus on court. I mean, what's what's your percentage? I mean, I think you spent a lot of time trying to stay healthy and and fit. Like, what's your percentage look like? Ah, uh, it's it depends. If if you don't count tournaments, then it's probably fifty fifty or close to that. Uh, maybe sixty on court practice, forty off court. Uh, if you count tournaments, obviously it's 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 a lot different. It's probably uh, you know three quarters of my time will be on the pickable court playing in a quarter off the pickable court training or rehabbing or doing stuff that's helping my body. Um, but when I'm not playing in the tournament, I do tend to spell, spend a lot of time off the court, just looking after the body, whether it's recovery the first few days after the tournament, whether it's, you know, strength and uh, explosiveness, you know, leading up into the tournament. And um, I, I feel like it's really important to be to be putting in the work off the court as well. It's not as simple as uh, just go out and play, you know, type of deal. You yeah. can get injured pretty quick, that, and your body just won't last that long either. Yeah, for sure. Now you talked about first couple of days after the tournament. Do you have a specific routine after the tournament, like do, you know, massage or stuff like that, or do you just just not play and stay off your feet? No, it it depends on. First of all, it depends on how long the travel is and all that, and how grueling the tournament was, but. It's usually not a bad play to get a massage, you know, the day you arrive uh, from the tournament. And it's probably not a bad play to um, completely take the day off from the pickable court. But you can still go for a light jog. You can do some stretching. Um, if you play in the summer when it's extremely hot and humid, uh, probably, you know, hydration is going to be extremely important. So making sure you look after your hydration as well. But uh, definitely off the court for that first day. And doing as much for the body as possible in terms of, you know, muscle recovery, um, stretching, and then just eating and drinking a, a ton just to, to replenish the body to where it's supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. On your on-court stuff, how much of it, I mean, I'm assuming a lot of it's more drilling. Is that correct? Uh, that's a fair assumption, yes. Um, especially if it's in between tournaments. We have, we have, I've already played a lot of matches in my, you know, my, my match stamina is already there. You know, it's you know I, I'm in the middle of the season and I'm I'm running in a pretty good rhythm. And then there's no need for me to play too many points in practice. Uh, it's mostly drilling. If it's off season when I'm kind of off for a few weeks, often tournaments are longer than a month, then then you'll see me play a lot more points as well. But uh, yeah, usually during the week in between tournaments, it's mostly drilling. Yeah. So when you're drilling, are you like working on certain patterns? Are you working on adding new shots? Like what's your mindset there? You know, it depends on, I watch, I try to watch a lot of tape and I try to see where I can improve. And 
sometimes it could be as simple as just super repetitive work for one shot. Let's say I'm working, I don't know, on a third shot drop or on a, I don't know, back and roll or stuff like that. Or other times could be working on patterns, you know, um, working on some more tactical stuff as well. So it's, it's dependent. It's changing from, uh, from week to week, sometimes changing from practice to practice. It depends on where my game is at and where I feel like I can still make some, some improvements and, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I do it. Awesome. And I know you've had a lot of success with uh, Rob this year. Um, I mean, how, uh, how do you view partnerships, um, fit and style of play and stuff like that when you're working as a team? Yeah, obviously partnerships are very, very important. Um, not just from a tactical standpoint, but from a you know mental standpoint as well. It's really important to gel with your partner. It's really important to be on the same page. It's really important to understand what everybody's doing out there, what each other's role is. So, yeah, partnering with Rob has been great. We've been playing for about a year now, and we've played a ton of events together. And uh, yeah, just doing battle alongside him and play, playing with him has been uh, has been extremely, extremely good. Awesome. Now you you play MLP, which you know you, you probably don't get it. The same amount of time when you're thrown in a situation where you know you don't you haven't spent enough time uh, or as much time with someone what do you do how do you how do you approach that when you're going into a new situation like that well most of the teams i play for uh got us in town together uh with with quite a good margin of time so we can actually practice together and, and get a feel for each other's game and personality and all that um and, you know, if you're lucky with some of the players, you, you might have partnered up in the past or, you, you know, you, you might have practiced some tournaments. Uh, but if that's not the case, then I think, yeah, getting getting to the tournament early, it's uh, it's going to be very important because you have to – MLP is all about the team. Um, and you just all have to be on the same page. The team energy has to be there. You see it all the time with the teams that have a lot of success. It's Obviously, talent is important, but it's it's a matter of how the players are gelling. Uh, how well they're competing together, what the team vibe is, and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's different than just playing regular tour stuff. Yeah, you mentioned that. So how do you how do you cultivate that, or how do you be a good team member uh, if you're not if you're not playing, or when when you know when you're just not even uh, practicing together? Well, you know, just being supportive, uh, bringing a lot of good energy from the sidelines. Uh, you know, if if you see something tactically there. You know, you, you could try to pass that on to, to your teammates. I mean, as long as you're always in, you know, in, in the, the the habit of helping and and just trying to be supportive, you know, that's you're kind of achieving the role of a good teammate. You know, you got to be connected even though you're not playing. You got to be connected over there and just try to help your teammates with whatever they might need uh, as much as possible during their uh, tough times when they're playing the match, you know. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Um, what... Um... I, I noticed somewhere that you had, I'm hoping I read this correctly, stand-up as something you did? Is that is that correct? No, no, I think it I think it was written the wrong way. I enjoy watching stand-up comedy. I don't do stand-up myself. Got it. At, Got least, it. I don't, I at like, least I don't. At least I don't mean to do it. Sometimes it might come out too funny, but yeah, no. Don't have that kind of talent, but I enjoy watching it. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's um... I mean, it's the ultimate type of pressure, right? Uh, stand up. <laughs> I, guess, I guess so, but I watch it. Yeah. They do a really good job and they're very natural. Uh, I guess like everything else, it, it gets better with practice and the more you do it. So, but yeah, uh, yeah it's a fun thing to watch this for me. Yeah. So you've been pl playing for a while. Um, what sort of things have changed over the years? Like what, what are you looking at um, in terms of the new players coming in? Uh, what what tendencies and what what sort of top of mind with what you see? With how the game's evolving? Well, there's obviously more and more players coming in now with the the tours and the major league pickable, you know, evolving the way they have been. Uh, there's more opportunity and uh, there's more and more athletes, that, uh, you know, just navigating over towards the game of pickable. Um, in terms of what's changed, obviously the big one is paddle technology. That's uh. That's changed a lot over the last. Well, that's changed a lot over the last three months. Let alone, you know, the last five six years. Um, so that's caused the game to change quite a bit as well, quite quite dramatically. Um, so that that I would say is the the biggest change I see in today's game. 
uh, very different than what he was five, six years ago because the paddles can allow you to do other things with the ball that you were not able to do in the in the past, you know. Um, and, yeah, it's fair to say that pretty much with every, you know, few months that pass by, there's more and more and more players jumping into the game of pickable and trying to be a pickable pro and trying to make it. And uh, so that's always fun. You want, you want the competition against different different players, different brackets. Um, so that's, that's always fun, you know, at least for me. Yeah, for sure. So it sounds like, I mean, I, I guess you're having equipment discussions and strategies discussions all the time, I guess, because I guess the different, you know, just, I guess, looking at what the most effective strategy is or how people can counter your strategy with the new paddles. Is that correct? Yeah, the game, the game is definitely changing, you know, quite rapidly and you got to stay on top of it. And, uh, yeah, definitely a lot of um a lot of uh technical talk with my paddle sponsor proton and they've been fantastic at you know at um taking my feedback and turning it into what i asked them to to help me with and uh yeah I'm very very lucky to be in that spot you know because it's, it's not as easy as it seems sometimes uh, uh to be you know up to pace with like i said with a very very fast rapidly changing paddle market um we we have the paddle regulations but you know it seems like those get pushed quite a bit over and over and over again especially recently everybody's on the on the edge there uh so you have to you have to be on top of that otherwise you're gonna you know you're gonna lose your competitive advantage um and then tactically also you gotta be yeah you gotta be able to adjust and uh and find out what's what's changing and what's changing in the right way and uh try to adapt to that yeah i mean with the i guess the i mean you're app but you, there's new equipment new balls kind of being introduced i mean any any adjustments to things that you you you're looking at 100 percent. the balls are changing with all the thing and uh different than what we used to uh, so you have to adjust to those you know uh, and the way they play um and then you obviously you travel the whole North America, the whole country to 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 play tournaments. So you play in different conditions. You could play in you know in Florida where it's very humid and hot, and next thing you know you go to I don't know Utah where it's a little cooler, and you play in the altitude, so the ball flies differently. So um, the conditions are always changing, so you got to be able to, to always adapt, and um, you you got to be very good at adapting in a relatively short amount of time. Um, and look now, obviously, this craze with the balls as well, just all sorts of different balls hitting the markets, all sorts of different balls for this. And it's not standardized anymore like it used to be in years past. But that's, you know, that's part of the the professional life. You know, it's, it's happening with other sports as well. And uh, like I said, you just got to be able to adapt as a pro athlete. Yeah, for sure. Now, speaking about adapting and new environments, you, you went to India How's the sport over there? Yeah, the sport is booming over there. Uh, Indians love their pickleball. They're very passionate people. Uh, they're very passionate about it. They already have some rivalries within their their country over there. But you know, you you couldn't ask for nicer people. Hospitality was great. Uh, um, food was awesome. Indian food is great, uh, and they're very eager to learn. Uh, they're very competitive players. Um, there's going to be a of them coming to open in April. Um, it was nice to play with in India because it wasn't just us, some of the American players and and the Indians there, but were, there were players from Europe as well. Spanish players were there, British, German, um, French, Australian players were there. So it was a uh, it was a good mix from all around the world to yeah, to get out and play and uh, and and you know that we, we were able to gather at night. They had some really good crowds. A lot of a lot of people came to watch. Like I said, very passionate. Uh, I know the live stream was was great as well, especially in the first day. You know, you, you don't really know what you're gonna get, and I think as soon as they turned around, they had over like three thousand people watching, and then it got better and better as the time went on. And uh, they, I mean, they have some celebrities behind it as well. A lot of a lot of you know celebrities playing the game there, kind of like it is here as well. Uh, so I yeah, it's definitely there too. So last in India, and I think it's, yeah, it's only got to grow from here. I think it's just a start, and it could be huge over there. 
Yeah, it, it looks like it. It looked like it had a lot of stars uh, lined up and interest around it. So it's exciting. Yeah, the global global sports. Uh, that was the company who ran it, and you know they did a great job with organizing everything, running the event, you know, doing the right uh, marketing, attracting the right media attention, and uh, yeah, long uh, long trip over there, <laughs> uh, but definitely definitely worth it. It was fun to to play pickleball over there. And uh, yeah, who knows? I'm sure we'll be back at some point in the future over there. Awesome. No, Great people. thank you. Thank you. I mean, when you when you talk to people that are, let's say, intermediate or just starting to become advanced or trying to get better, what, what do you find advice-wise um, you commonly give to individuals like that? Just, you know, just to learn to, to play the right way. Obviously, as you as you get through the lower ranks and intermediates and all that, the power game is is a must. You, you must have it, you know, otherwise you're not going to go to... It, it's mostly about outpowering, outpowering the other person. And then you get to a certain level where the counter punch gets a lot stronger, uh, especially with guys. And then at that point, you have to learn to master some of the soft game as well. Otherwise, it's going to be a, a tough day at the office, you know, if you can really get that ball to drop in the kitchen just to start, you know, uh, before you can expose your fast hands and your power at the at the kitchen line, you know. Um, yeah, so um, you know, you just train the right instincts. Obviously, playing tournaments is what helps because that's where you learn most of your lessons, whether they're you know tactical or mental. That's that's really where it's at. Uh, I hear this a lot of like, oh, I'm gonna train for six months and then I'm gonna hit a tournament scene. It's the best practice still playing tournaments, you know. So it's good to practice. I'm not saying you shouldn't practice. I think you practice is great for repetition. And practice is great for a lot of things that you can improve on, but there's no better practice than playing tournaments. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things where you got to get out there and, and compete as, as soon as you can and learn your lessons there, practice during the week, try to improve on those things and go get battle tested again during the weekend. Yeah. I love it. It's great. Well, I you know, appreciate what you do. Um, it's fun following along. Um, I appreciate you sharing your story. Thank you. No, that's, uh, that's my pleasure. You know, uh, I enjoy the game of pickleball. I enjoy, uh, going around different places uh, and introducing the game of Pickleball to people and talking Pickleball, Pickleball to other people. And uh, yeah, I'm all about the game. So uh, yeah, happy to be happy to be on the show and uh, happy to share some of my knowledge with you guys. Right. Thank you. Alpha Pickleball podcast with Tats. If you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe, rate, and connect with us on social media. Stay alpha on the pickleball court until our next session.